Hello guys, how are you all? Welcome back to my channel. So, today we are gonna see, what if Naruto had a pet tiger? Part 1, subscribe if you enjoy the video, and also support SDGX for his fantastic skill, link in description. So let's begin the story. Aju was, the Cryorachimaru, the disguised snake Sanon, exclaimed as he rammed his five purple flamed fingers into one Uzumaki Naruto, the container of the Kaiubi no Kitsune. His other two teammates, in their state of fear of the strong ninja, did nothing as they watched as the blonde went limp in the strong tongue hold the San and had on him. Aruno Sakura was, scared out of her mind at who they were facing and didn't know what to do. Ichiha Sasuke, though, felt fear of this opponent, a fear he hadn't felt since his brother had killed his clan members and left him to survive. As Rachimaru was, about to fling the boy over to the forest floor, he saw the boy unconsciously grip onto his tongue. He noted the boy was, actually knocked out at the moment, even when he's unconscious, he is willing to fight to the end to defend his teammates that made him narrow his eyes at the victim in his grasp, if this boy were to stay alive, with that kind of determination, he would be a great hindrance to my plans he then lowered the boy a bit, but tightened his tongue around the boy, and got yelp of pain from him, I'll get rid of him now he thought as he used a small amount of chakra and strength, and flung the boy away, out into sky, and passed to the height of the trees. Naruto, Sakura called out to the boy. She couldn't believe it, he's actually gone now. She would no longer hear the annoying boy ask her out, no longer would she hear his silly jokes, no longer would she see that cheerful smile that would actually brighten up her day when her crush would shoot down her attempts at asking him out. Now all she knew now was, sadness of losing a teammate and possibly, a good friend. Sasuke stayed rooted in his spot. Fear had taken a new turn for him. Now that fear was, mixed in with anger. He may not have had a good opinion of the dope, but the blonde was, his teammate and closest thing to a best friend and rival. If anything, he was, a better replacement as a brother than his actual one, Itachi. Now all he had was, fear of losing his teammate and raging hot anger at the powerful Nin, who most likely killed that said teammate. But although his logical mind concluded the blonde was, already dead, a faint shimmer of hope remained as he prayed the dope would be safe and alive you aren't off the hook Naruto, not after that comment you made to me, he thought as he remembered when Naruto called him a scaredy cat. As Sasuke renewed his attack on the disguised Sanon, Naruto was, sailing through the air, well above the forest of death. When he reached the peak of being thrown, he started to fall back into the forest. As the forest floor started to get closer, something else was, happening from within the blonde. Iwubi, the nine-tailed fox, was, at loss now. He had been awakened since the day the seal started to weaken when Team 7 went to Wave Country. When he had awoken, he knew he had a lot of catching up to do, so he started to look through all the memories of his container. What he saw was, something that even a demon shouldn't be subjected to. Torture, famine, isolation, and a near-rape attempt if it wasn't for the Sandame Hokage's timely intervention. But the one thing that caught his huge admiration and respect was that the boy himself took it all in and still tried to protect those he considered those who were in his pack and those who were in the village. The fox scoffed at the foolish humans who treated the boy with such hateful malice. One thing he knew, they didn't deserve such an honorable and noble being, even if the boy was obnoxious and loud. Now though, he was in a predicament. Someone, he had a strong feeling he knew who had sealed his power and felt the boy was close to dying. With a great burst of his own chakra, he looked through the boy's eye and saw his container was about to fall to his death. For all the things to happen, he knew this wasn't good. He looked below and knew he was even more screwed there at where he knew he was going to fall was a thick but broken branch sticking up towards his body. At the rate of speed and height of him falling, he knew the boy and himself would be run through by that tree branch. There was only one thing that could really save the boy. As he was forced back to his cage, thanks to the extra seal placed on the seal the Shinigami made, he called upon the power he was chosen to protect. This power was meant for those destined for greatness. The one thing that he was meant to protect, along with the other tailed demon lords that were chosen to protect that very thing that was similar to his own. The Ronin Armor. As Naruto's body started to get closer to the broken but thick and dangerous branch, a seal appeared on his forehead. That seal glowed bright red and it read Jin, Righteousness. He was then engulfed in a red sphere as he crashed into the forest floor, burning both the dangerous branch and anything else that was in the path of its descent. The glow of the sphere died down and showed a perfectly healthy Naruto. But now the horrible orange jumpsuit that said hey, look at me and the big bullseye on my back, but now it was replaced with that of a red and white body armor. The boots, gauntlets, lower region, and body being red, while well, everything else was white, and surprisingly, his headband was still tight around his blonde head. The body armor then glowed bright red before it vanished into leaves of Sakura petals, leaving him back to his horrible orange jumpsuit. In his cage, Kaiubi sighed a sigh of relief. It was a true gamble. The nine Ronin armors were really picky about who they would bear their power. 
the armor of the wildfire was the most stubborn, since it was usually worn by those who usually lead the rest and held a great destiny before them. That made the fox stop in his train of thought. If that was true, there was much to be done if the blonde did indeed hold a great destiny. He groaned a bit and knew he had a lot to work with, since he knew his container wasn't that much of a ninja, much less a samurai. As the fox pondered on what to do to help his container, albeit grudgingly, Naruto still laid unconscious on the forest floor. As he laid there, a figure jumped over the trench that was made by the blonde's entrance into the forest floor. The figure came upon the blonde boy's body and looked at him with a cocked head before it bent down and took the blonde by the collar of his jumpsuit and dragged him out of the crater he had made. It was now nighttime as the blonde groaned as he slowly opened his eyes. He felt that he was set up against a wall of some sort, he could hear the drip of water that echoed out and could see it was kind of dark, ugh, where am I? He asked out loud. When he got no answer, he willed his eyes to open more and looked around. He saw that he was alone and that he was in a cave of some sort, what am I doing here he then started to panic a bit, he wondered where in the world were his teammates. He then stopped suddenly and tried to calm himself down alright Naruto, try to remember what happened. First, you were separated from your teammates and almost turned into snake crap if you hadn't used your cage bunshin. Second, you stopped Sasuke team from getting himself and Sakura-chan from getting killed by that weirdo. Then, you were caught by that very weirdo, and then he tried to remember further, but all he could come up with was, blank. He shook his head and knew he was, definitely in a big mess. He stiffly got up from his position and leaned himself against the cavern wall and walked towards the entrance of the said cave. He noted that it was nighttime and looked up to the moon it's just about midnight he noted again. Being on the run constantly and hiding out in the forest forced him to take note of what time it was by the look of the moon and sun and also helped his survival skills when camping out since the villagers would also constantly come to vandalize his apartment and hope to give the blonde a new hole in his body. Naruto then sat back down and sighed out of frustration. Things were not going his way, not for him and certainly not for his teammates. He was really worried about them now. Sakura, he knew would have a tough time without him, since Sasuke would most likely be put out of action by that weirdo nin. Sasuke himself, even for the team he was, was his teammate and the only person he knew he felt the same kind of loneliness he did, so if anything, he considered him a friend and he doesn't abandon his friends. He then snapped his head in the direction he heard a rustle in the wood of the forest of death. Now he was getting really worried. If a team of foreign nins were to appear, his chances of survival were nil, and if the nins were from the same village as him, his chances were still nil as those of his generation still had the hate the older generation had for him, which meant they might kill him in order to gain favor of their peers and get congratulated for killing the demon. What he saw made it worse than nins. What I saw was a medium-sized white tiger staring straight at him as it came out of the darkness of the forest. Now his chances were absolutely zero. Nins were intellectual people he had a chance to trick with a clever henge, but animals were another thing. He knew any animal could be up to par with human intellect, but their senses were far beyond those of human standards, so a henge would be a waste. Even if he could escape, there was a chance it would chase him down with its heightened sense of smell and eyesight and rip him apart with its powerful jaws. This tiger though, he could tell it wasn't an adult, but it wasn't a cub either. He guessed it was in between the two, so it would probably make it a teenager itself. But that really didn't matter now since it started to slowly step towards him. He stayed down on the floor frozen in fear. Was this how he was going to die? Being a meal for some overgrown cat and pooped out like yesterday's lunch. When the white tiger had its face about an inch away from Naruto's own, he couldn't help but tremble in fear a bit as the tiger opened its mouth. He closed his eyes tight and awaited his fate. What he got though made him almost burst out in laughter as his face was being licked completely by the massive tongue of the tiger. He tried to push it away, but it kept on licking his face, assuring the blonde it was friendly to him, ha 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 ha, stop, come on, you're tickling me here boy, he said as he tried to pry off the tiger face of his. As soon as the tiger stopped, he cocked his head to the side, but then nuzzled its nose into the blonde's face and purred a bit. Naruto had no clue what just happened, but the tiger really seemed friendly to him, so he started to pet it on the head and got a louder purr in return. That made Naruto smile gently at the white tiger. It looked like he just got a new friend, even if it was an animal friend at that. He then thought of Kiba and his dog and chuckled, Heh, now I got something better than him, haha, <laughs> but then stopped, he would not treat his new friend like some sort of property. He nodded to himself and continued to pet the tiger. As soon as the two stopped their little bonding, Naruto sighed and laid his head back on the wall of the cavern and closed his eyes as the tiger settled its head on the lap of his new friend, well boy, it looks like I'm in a big pickle here, he said to the tiger. He then looked back in the direction of the forest where his tiger friend came from, hey boy, could you help me out? He asked the tiger. 
He knew it was a little childish, even though he was a kid, so he at least should be allowed to talk to an animal, even though Kiba talked to his dog, but he was an exception, since his clan could communicate with their animal partners. The tiger lifted his head and looked into his eyes, and he felt he got his answer as the white tiger got up and got under his right armpit. Naruto was then lifted and understood the tiger, saying he would help him by letting the blonde use him as a crutch. The blonde smiled and thanked the tiger by nodding at him, really thankful how he got a friend so quickly to help him out. As the two walked, Naruto began to wonder what to name his new friend, he just couldn't keep calling the tiger boy, since he knew that would be a little demeaning. He had enough people demeaning him as it is, he wouldn't have anyone else demean his new friend. He soon found himself in a clearing, where he had entered the forest from his fall. He looked at the area with his mouth wide open. The place was totaled as he saw a long trail of destruction in the clearing. In that trail of destruction was fire and lots of it. It was a good thing that fire was staying in the trench that it was in, otherwise the forest around them would have been burnt down by now. He looked at the end of the trench and saw a body print in it. He then put two and two together and knew it was him who did this. He then looked at his tiger friend for a moment before he spoke, you were the one who got me out of there, huh boy? He asked the tiger softly. He got a roar of confirmation from the tiger. He smiled again as he ruffled the hair on the tiger's head then got a purr and what he thought was a smile on the tiger's face. He then looked back at the raging fire in the trench that was made by his entrance and knew what to name his new friend now. Hey boy, how about I name you White Blaze? He asked with a happy grin. The tiger looked like it was thinking about it before it roared another confirmation at him. Naruto nodded, not sure how he knew he got a yes from the tiger and understood it. Maybe it was because of the fox sealed inside of him, or how much in tune he was with nature than anyone else was, or maybe both. But none of that really mattered now, he needed to get back to his teammates now. He didn't want them to fail just because he was having fun with a new friend while they broke their backs trying to find him, well, come on white blaze, let's get to finding my team, he said as the tiger led him further into the forest. As soon as they got some good distance of traveling, while still walking slowly through the forest, they stopped by one of the many trees of the forest of death. White Blaze then dropped the boy against one of the trees and set its head on the boy's lap. Naruto blinked a bit but nodded an understanding of what the tiger was thinking. They needed rest, him especially, so that they could continue the search as soon as they woke up. So with that, Naruto closed his eyes and let his mind wander about until he succumbed to the spell of the Sandman. And no, I don't mean Gara. He then opened his eyes and saw he was somewhere else completely. Gone was, the forest he and the other Chunin hopefuls were taking the second test of the Chunin selection exam, and was, replaced with a dark and musty sower. He then looked around and found he was, alone, white blaze, hey, where are you boy? He called out to the halls of the sower. He then noted he felt completely fine now. The muscle ache and fatigue in his head was, now gone. This was, weird, even for him, now. He then heard a growl in the halls of the sower, and it didn't sound like the growl of his tiger friend, white blaze. It sounded more like that of a dog or a fox if he had to guess. And if he hazarded a guess, it was a big one at that from the depth tone of the growl. He gulped a little bit in fear of meeting the fox, but he had no other choice now but to go forward. So, while swallowing his fear and forcing it down, he started to walk towards the source of the growl he heard in the halls. When he got to his destination, he saw a cage that went up into the darkness of the ceiling, if there was one at all, that is, with a tag smack dab in the center of the cage with a kanji on it that red seal. As Naruto got closer, he could see that faint form of a giant fox behind it. He then stepped back in fear as he saw two giant blood-red eyes with black slits in them opened. Come closer the fox commanded with its sharp razor teeth being shown the blonde below him. Naruto did so, as if he was in a trance. Naruto half expected the fox to shoot out its claw to get him, but all he got was the fox analyzing him with calculating eyes. He then saw the eyes close and heard a deep rumble from the back of the fox's throat, as if he was humming in thought. It then opened its eyes again had them narrowed at Naruto, although I'm glad my idea of using the armor of wildfire to save this worked, I really wonder what it truly saw in the kid to allow him to bear it, he mumbled to himself out loud, loud enough for Naruto to hear. Naruto heard every word and was confused by them. He was going to rant about how it was the fox's fault that it had a horrible life, but now he was just completely confused. Armor of wildfire. What did he see in him? Let him bear it. Just what in the world was the fox talking about, what the hell are you talking about? He called to the fox as he got some of his confidence back. This time he jumped back in surprise as claws shot out from the other side of the cage, barely getting himself out the way of getting impaled, mortal, you will not interrupt my thoughts if you know what's best, Kai Ubi said irritably as he retracted his claws back into his cage. 
He then sighed a bit as he knew he had to at least answer the pathetic mortal, you kid, have been given a power unlike any other in this plane of existence, something that I should have kept sealed with me for all time. What power is that, na? Ninarito asked as he bounced on the balls of his feet. What he processed in his head of what the Kaiubi said, it meant he got something really cool. Being irritated by his childish antics and for not seeing the consequences of what this might hold, Kaiubi roared, do not presume this is just some power to be used for your amusement you pathetic flesh bag. Do you have any idea of the mistake I made just giving you this armor? The fox asked angrily as scared the blonde by his outburst. Calm yourself Kaiubi, this was, meant to be, said a serene and soft female voice. The two turned and saw what anyone would think was, a monk. This monk wore white and blue robes, and wore a straw hat that covered most of her face except her lower jaw, which showed her soft pouted like lips while holding a staff that jingled with the rings it held in its gold ring. Aerosama the fox exclaimed with wide eyes and immediately fell on all of its fours, as if it was, bound to the monk. Who the heck are you? Naruto asked bluntly as he looked at the robed monk woman whose flowing long blue hair waved, as if a wave of air was, passing through. You fool, bow down, this is Kaerasama, the one successor to the ancient one. The fox exclaimed to the blonde and tried to whack the blonde with its tail, but failed since it was, held back by the seal. The supposed monk just giggled bit and waved off the fox, come now Kaiubi, no need for formalities, you know how much I hate it, now then, the monk then lifted its straw hat and showed Naruto he was, in the presence of a very beautiful woman. Like he had observed before, she still held the clothing of a monk, but the robes didn't do her beauty justice. Those lips he saw before now really fit her face with the long, but trimmed blue hair. Her chocolate brown eyes fitted her with red eyeliner, finishing her touch of beauty, and that was, the only piece of makeup he saw on her, this is the new bearer of the armor of wildfire, is it? She questioned as she walked around him and started to examine him up and down. Naruto felt like the woman was, killing him with her eyes, and that made him flush with red cheeks man, this girl is beautiful, even more beautiful than Sakura-chan wait a minute his thoughts, then came to a halt. The last time he thought another girl was, more beautiful than Sakura was, Haku, and she was, actually um, can I ask you a question, if I may be so bold. Blinking a bit at the boy, she nodded, go right ahead, she said as she waited for his question. Kaiubi knew what the kid was going to ask, since he had gone through his memories. He was about to stop the blonde, but it was too late. Are you a guy? He asked bluntly, as he usually did. Silence, that was what followed after the question. Kaiubi was actually getting scared of it now, the silence was going on for too long. It was then broken by the mistress herself, now why would you think that young man? She asked neutrally, though Kaiubi could feel the temperature getting lower around the area, that was not a good sign. Well Naruto then scratched his head nervously, it's just that you're so beautiful, that I doubted you were a girl, the last time I thought a girl was, more beautiful than I could imagine was, actually a boy, and you know you can see where I can have my doubts, he said as he looked at her with nervous glance, and then looked down to the floor. The woman thought about it, and nodded as it did make sense, but that didn't make it any less harmful at being thought of as the opposite sex, my dear young man, someday that tongue of yours will get you killed, she said bluntly herself. Naruto had the decency to look at least a little ashamed when he asked the question. She sighed and turned to the fox, you have a lot to work with Kaiubi, for whatever reasons the armor of wildfire has, it has chosen him. You do best to make him live up to the full potential of the armor itself. Hi, Kaira-sama, the fox nodded as he got an order from his superior. But he was also very glad at being left off the hook. If the ancient had struck down the blonde, he would have also felt it, and as the saying goes, hell hath no fury like woman scorned, so he has a reason to not feel that kind of pain. But Naruto had many questions he had to know now, and it seemed this supposed ancient could help him with these questions he has, um, miss, may I ask some more questions? He asked formally since he knew the cuter and quieter they are, the more deadly they are. The mistress turned her head back to Naruto and nodded, you may speak young man, she replied as she got ready for any of the real questions he had. Just what is the armor of wildfire? Naruto asked as he sat down on the wet floor, not caring that his bottom and legs were getting wet from the watered floor. The armor of wildfire is one of nine mystical armors, the five ronin armors, and the four warlord armors, these nine armors, have the ability to be used for salvation or destruction, upon the whim of their users. Though, usually the five ronin armor are wielded by those with strong hearts and righteous intentions, they can also be forced into submission to those who want the power of those armors. The warlord armors are just about the same, but are usually wielded by those who have a lust for battle, but also those of who can control their bloodlust for it as well, Naruto, throughout the whole explanation, was, strangely attentive to the whole lecture of the armors. These mystical armors really intrigued him so much now. So, where are the other armors? He wondered as he already knew where the wildfire armor was. Each armor is guarded by each tail demon lord, she answered simply. 
Why, if as far as you've explained, wouldn't these demons use the armors for their own ends? Naruto asked in a little worry. No, they can't, the armors are meant only to be used by humanity, so there are barriers erected to reject demons to keep them from claiming their hands on the armors, Kara explained calmly. Well, why give it to them then? Naruto asked as he raised an eyebrow at her. Because of their strength, they are the perfect guardians for the armors, since they can't claim the armors themselves, Kara said as she moved her straw hat back down to its original position. What are the names of the armors? Naruto asked as he was, curious about the armor Bob's names. Wildfire sounded cool to him, that name may be a good one to use for making a name for himself later. Aside from the armor of Wildfire, there is the armor of Halo, the armor of Hard Rock, the armor of the Torrent, and the armor of Strata. These five armors are the five Ronin armors, Kara then closed her eyes a bit and spoke softly, now, keep in mind, the name of the Warlord armors may sound cruel, but it is how the wielder of the armors uses them is what counts. These four armors are named the Armor of Poison, the Armor of Corruption, the Armor of Illusion, and the Armor of Cruelty. Naruto really liked the name of these armors, they made the name sound fearsome and full of power, one last question, why were they scattered? From what I can gather, it seemed that something must have separated them or something, Naruto said as he got ready for another lengthy explanation. A little sharper than he looks, this one is she thought is couldn't help but smirk a little at the blonde, but nodded and spoke in her usual soft tone, yes, the armors were scattered for a reason. You see, there was, a great evil before they were made to scatter, and that evil was, an evil being that could easily match Kaiubi here himself, Naruto's eyes went wide and looked at the fox, and saw the eyes glazed over a bit, as if remembering something from the past, that evil's name was, an evil, but also powerful spirit named Talpa. Talpa was, actually, in a sort of way, the creator of the nine mystical armors we have been talking about. What? How, from what you've said so far, the armors are usually meant to be used for the good guys, Naruto said as he shot up from the floor in surprise. A millennia before Talpa had appeared once again, Talpa once terrorized the countryside, laying claim to everything he saw in his sight, but that was, put to a stop by the original Ancient One. The two fraught and the Ancient One barely won, but when Talpa was defeated, the evil miasma permeating from his body lingered, signaling that even though his body died, his evil spirit clung to the powerful armor he wore. So in an attempt to stop Talpa from coming back to the world of the living, the Ancient One used his powers and separated the power the armor held and released the spirit within. That was, how the nine mystical armors of the Ronin and Warlord armors were created. Whoa, Naruto said as he didn't know if he could take any more of his history lesson anymore, he was, starting to get a headache now. Now where was, I, ah yes, when Talpa had returned to the world of the living, five modern day warriors came into the possession of the Ronin armors and fought his minions, the dynasty as he called them, and his four warlords, who held the four warlord armors, Naruto's eyes opened wide again, but beat it down and continued to listen, in the end, all nine stood up against Talpa himself and combined their powers to destroy the evil spirit once and for all, and they succeeded she then sighed and looked down to the floor, or so they thought, she added in almost a whisper, but Naruto heard her, what do you mean by thought? he asked with a little worry. Do not worry, Talpa is sealed away in a great statue meant to hold powerful beings such as he, Kara assured him, the only thing that could free him, is if all of the nine-tailed demon lords give up their power to the statue itself, while also sacrificing their lives, she heard a snort behind her, and knew it was, the Kaiubi behind her, and if to assure you further, just look at Kaiubi. If any of the tailed demon lords are like him, then you have nothing to worry about any of them giving up their power. That's another thing I'd like to ask, Naruto said as he was, really relieved about Talpa not coming back, why are Kaiubi all humble like you when he's a demon? Naruto asked with a raised eyebrow. He looked at the Kaiubi and noted he was, fidgeting a bit, if he could have seen in the dark, he probably would have seen the blush on the cheeks of Kaiubi's dark orange fur. Oh, well aside from the other demon lords who had no choice to obey me as being a higher than them, Naruto then saw a little mischievous glint her eyes as she continued, Kaiu-chan here, that made his purr cup and look wide-eyed at the Kaiubi, used to be my little pet fox, after the battle with Talpa was, done. The use be such a cute little kit, and then in an unfit character of an ancient one, she squealed, Kawei. She then took out a picture from her robes, and showed Naruto a picture of little fox kit, that had two tails being carried like a baby by a differently clothed Kara, who was, feeding him a bottle of milk. Naruto looked silently at the picture. A moment later a snicker could be heard from him as a wavy smile started to form on his lips. The snicker turned into a chuckle and into a flown-blown laughter as Naruto pointed at the Kaiubi, but he couldn't say anything as he was, too busy rolling on the floor with laughter. Finally, the Kaiubi had enough, shut up you little flesh bag, he called out as he was, raging in a tornado of red chakra. Now, now, Kaiu-chan, no need to be like that, Kara chided. Yeah, haha, Kaiu-chan, calm down, haha, no, he he he, need to, ha ha ha, man, this is too much, Naruto said as he took a tear off the corner of his eye. 
Kai Ubi just grumbles about little blonde kids having no respect, well, that's about all I could think of to ask. The woman nodded and then stepped up to Naruto, her height dwarfing his since his malnourished eating left him short, she noted. She then put her hand on his head and smiled serenely at him, grow strong young man, and never regret your actions, she said softly to him. Naruto gasped a bit at what she just said, he said almost those exact words and took them as his, his ninja way. He then looked up at her serene smile and smiled genuinely back at her. Kaira then cast a glance back at Kai Ubi and sent him a message through her eyes and saw him not in his darkened cage. She then vanished in a swirl of sakura petals. A bit of a silence followed afterwards, one that was, broken by Kai Ubi, well, I have my orders, he mumbled as a set of twin swords appeared in Naruto's hands. The swords had black sheaths with blue hilts, while the hand guards were yellow in color. Eh? He asked as he looked at the fox with thin-lined eyes, making him look like a fox himself. You will be trained in the art of the sword, or as you mortals put it, Kinjutsu the fox explained calmly, he would bear with training the kid, if anything, this was, just another way of establishing that he was, the most powerful demon lord. Naruto looked like that fox grew another head, he didn't have enough time for this. I don't have time to train you Baka Kitsune, I have a test to get back to, I, I'm slows here in the mind kit, you'll have plenty of time to train in the art of Kenjutsu, Kai Ubi said calmly, as he cut off the blonde rant, beside, what the mind perceives, the body feels, so if you train hard, you'll be good in no time. In fact, make as many of those cage bunchons as you can, here and now, he said as the area around Naruto widened into the size of a very large field. Wait, so you're saying that time is slowing down here and I can train as much as I want. But how am I supposed to make some cage bunchons here? Naruto asked as he pulled the twin swords from their sheaths and nodded them. Even to an untrained eye as he could see these swords were one of a kind while he thought as the twin swords shone in whatever light was, in the room on their silver blades. Like I said before Kit, what the mind perceives, now just make as many cage bunchons would ya? The fox answered as he started to get irritated by the little blonde. Alright, alright, don't get your tails in a knot, Naruto said as set down the swords and formed his signature jutsu, cage bunch and no jutsu, he exclaimed as a thousand clones poofed into existence. He stepped back in surprise, he didn't expect to make this many at all, the most he could come up with at least was, a hundred, two hundred if he was, determined enough. Now, go and start attacking with those swords. Don't worry, this is your mind, so even if you get injured, you'll heal thanks to me being so close by, the fox said as Naruto nodded and picked up his sword. He then saw the blonde charge in with a battle cry and started to fight the many clones he had made. While the blonde fought, the Kai Ubi started on the other orders he received from his mistress and started to heal the malnourished body of the boy. If this boy were to handle the armor in his current state, he would only kill himself. Plus, the process was painful since it involved growing the bones and making the muscles straighten out and improve for the new height. He would also increase the boy's strength a bit, not monsterly strong, but muscles meant for speed. Strength was good, but speed was what was needed for the armor of wildfire and its weapons. This was the reason he had the boy charge in with his swords against the clone, who also had twin swords, fight. With his poor skills, he would get cut a lot, but would not feel the pain. But since the process was occurring at this moment, he would blame it on the cuts he would get and think all the training he did made him like he would be later. He then heard cries of pain and looked at what got him mildly impressed. The blonde was cutting down a good amount of the clones with some good swipes with his swords, even though he knew the blonde had no prior training in the use of a sword. Maybe the kid had some more potential in Kenjutsu rather than Nin and Tujutsu. If anything, that made some sense with the armor of Wildfire choosing him. It must have sensed the potential in the kit with its weapons. Though, he had a feeling there was much more to it than that. But, nonetheless, the kid was getting his fair share of cuts from his clones, so his plan was not all lost. Training in the use of his swords and getting body fixed at the same time, killing two birds with one stone, is as the saying goes. After what seemed like an hour, Naruto was down to one last clone. The both of them staring each other down in sloppy ready stances, looking at each other down as if it was an old western. When Kaiubi saw dust going over the watery floor and a tumbleweed bounced on by, he just shook his head and rolled his eyes, the kid was being too dramatic for his own good. The two then charged at each other with their swords at their sides. When they got close enough, one jumped in the air and came down with both swords. The other Naruto rolled out of the way and back flipped over the low follow-up strike that was meant to cut off his legs. The first Naruto blocked the left sword that swung to split his head down from the top of his head, he then countered by stabbing towards the second Naruto's stomach. But that strike parried the second Naruto using the right sword to do so and pushed the first Naruto back a bit with his shoulder. Taking a second to breath, the two smirk at each other before they resume their fight. Kaiubi watched with calculating eyes as he knew if the boy had used his cage bunchin like this, he would have made it up to his point in skill. 
When a cage bunshin is released, all its knowledge and experience is sent back to the user. This makes this type of bunshin great for recon missions and gaining more knowledge. The only reason no one has used it for training is because no one has the stamina and chakra reserves like his container, seeing as how he had the infinite chakra supply from the Kaiubi himself, only he could use this type of training. Of course, those who read the fanfics and the manga know this, and now, by using this type of training in his mind, he has grown to the skill of a novice swordsman. Now all he needed was, someone to guide his movement and teach him some kinjutsu. As soon as Naruto dispatched the last clone, Kaiubi spoke up, Kit, your training is done for the day, it's time for you to go back, before the boy could protest, Kaiubi hurled him out of his own mind. Naruto snapped his eyes open and saw that it seemed to be day, but he couldn't tell what time it was, since the sun was, blocked by the thick wood branches of the trees. He stretched and yawned out loud, waking his tiger friend. White Blaze looked up, but then jumped back and snarled at him. This startled Naruto, whoa, White Blaze, it's me, Naruto then clutched his throat and wondered why his voice sounded a little more deeper. The tiger snarled a bit more before it stalked towards him, and then sniffed a bit. When it smelled him, it cocked its head in confusion and sniffed some more, before it got on a low crouch and jumped him. Naruto held up his hands and tried to say it was him, but was caught by the tiger as it landed on top of him. The sound of laughter was then filled in the section of the forest of death. As Naruto tried to pry off the tiger from licking his face in happiness, White Blaze, stop it, you tickling me with your tongue and whiskers, ha 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 ha, he said as he started to tear up on the sides of his eyes. When the tiger stopped, he breathed a sigh of relief. Now, what is up with my voice? He asked himself as he got up and felt strange. 1. His clothes felt a bit tight on him. 2. He could see, hear, and smell better than before. 3. It looked like he was looking from a higher angle, as if he got a bit taller. He dug into his back pouch and pulled out a mirror. A ninja must always have these, just in case they need to look over the corner without leaning their heads to reveal themselves, and to also signal their allies by using sunlight or anything reflective that can be used. Though, if he had to guess, Sakura only had one because she always wanted to look pretty for Sasuke team. He then looked and was surprised to see that his face was a bit more defined and was losing the baby fat that he held. He then looked at his body and saw that his jumpsuit was smaller on him and that he somehow grew some inches. It was no wonder why his hit I-8 was feeling a little tighter than usual as well. If you're wondering how much he grew, think of him looking like on Naruto. Shippuden, or after the two and a half year training trip with Jiraiya. He just has his old clothes on, which are a little tight on him. Naruto took off his jacket and tied it around his waist so that he could at least breathe a little better and rolled down the sleeves of his pants so that they came down to his ankles again and loosened the belt he had that was tightened to his previous state of body. He then re-strapped his ninja shoes so that his feet don't have the blood being cut off by them. He noticed that his black shirt that was underneath his jacket was now stuck on him like a second skin now, but just shrugged. If he had to guess, he could be just as tall, if not, a little taller than Sasuke. Naruto questioned as he flexed his arm a bit and saw that he actually had muscle, not overly muscled, but just enough to satisfy him, what the mind perceives, the body will feel, he quoted from what he heard from Kaiubi and nodded at the logic. All of this must have been from the training he did in his mind. He then got a satisfied smirk on his face. Now that he could do this kind of training, he could do anything, the possibilities could very well be endless. But Naruto knew one thing, you just don't grow that much in one night of sleep, even if he wasn't that stupid. He wondered if it would work, so thought for a moment of speaking in his mind yo, Kaiubi, can you hear me he asked as he wondered if this would work. Hitrier he heard from the back of his mind, but couldn't comprehend what the fox was saying since he was cutting off in intervals. Kaiubi, can you hear me he asked as he walked around a bit. Aralitic a bit further to your left he heard a little bit clearer, but at least he understood what he said. Okay, can you hear me now he asked again as he did so. Now lift your right leg in front of you he nodded and lifted right leg straight up now to your left Naruto, then tilted his head to the left and put your right index finger up your right nostril and scratch you with your left hand Naruto did so, even through all of this, Naruto couldn't hear the snicker that was being emitted by the fox now. Hop on your last remaining leg while spinning around on the said leg and Naruto continued to do as the fox says. Can you hear me now he asked mentally while still doing the tasks the Kaiubi told him to do. Yeah, I can, you big idiot Kaiubi said as he loved doing such mischief. It is the number two thing he loved doing, number one being of course causing destruction. What you laughing, I did just as said Naruto then stopped what he was doing and turned red from embarrassment and anger, you damn baka kitsune, if I ever find a way to strangle you for this, I'm going for it, he yelled out to the entire forest. Yeah, haha, <laughs> right the fox said as he continued, but calm down a bit now what do you want? Kaiubi asked as he settled down in his cage. What did you do to my body? Naruto asked the fox. 
He then felt the curiosity coming off the fox and answered, I know you had something to do with the growth of my body, growth takes a slow process, and I know growing a few inches overnight isn't natural. It's even more unnatural without all the nutrients that I hadn't eaten during my childhood and recently, making me a more malnourished child. I shouldn't even have this much muscle in my arms, legs and body no less. The kid is a lot smarter than I thought the fox thought, as he laid back down in his cage, the power of your new armor would have been far too great for your previous state of body. Let's just say I tweaked your body a bit in order for you to handle that power Kai Ubi explained to his blonde container. I see Naruto said as he fell silent for a bit, but then remembered he had some teammates to return back to and nodded to himself Arigato Kai Ubi he thought silently before he turned back his tiger friend, White Blaze, the tiger then got up from laying on the floor and walked over to him, come on boy, let's go find my teammates, he said to the tiger and rushed off with White Blaze right behind him. You're welcome Kit Kaiubi said quietly as he closed his eyes and let go of the chakra he had sustained to keep the barrier Orochimaru had used to seal his power, at bay. As he released his chakra, his cage now had extra bars going across it with a lock and chain in the middle of it. Kaiubi sighed and knew it would be a while before someone released that seal. As he raced towards random directions, Naruto kept looking left and right for his teammates. Not much later did he hear the sound of combat. He raced off towards the sounds with White Blaze not losing a beat on him. As soon as he got there, he saw the first and only sound team, minus the girl for some reason, attacking some very recognizable leaf nins. Naruto looked at who was there and saw his teammates first. Sasuke looked to be put out and seemed to be sick, if the wet towel on his head was any indication. Then his other teammate, Sakura, looked pretty beat up since she had a swollen left eye. That made him clench his fist tight, whoever did that to her was going to pay. He then looked and saw it was Team 10, consisting of Ino, Shikamaru, and Chaoji. Shikamaru was holding on to Ino, who looked knocked out, and Chaoji was down on the floor whimpering. The last person there was also knocked out, and to his slight surprise, it was the green clad Nin Rock Lee. As he got closer, he gestured for White Blaze to keep it quiet. They steadily got closer and closer as the sound Nins boasted about themselves, minus the girl. When he got close enough, he could hear the cocky spiky haired Nin speak, Did you ninja think you can beat us? You guys are just a bunch of hacks, he taunted. From a second-rate village, added the mummy-like nin. I'd like to see you say that again, Naruto said as he got their attention by surprising the mummy nin with a big punch to the face, you pieces of scum, he said, wiping the imaginary dust off his hands. Oh yeah, take this, the spiky-haired nin then turned both his hands towards Naruto, Zenkana, he called out as a sound blast headed toward Naruto. Naruto quickly dashed to the side, barely letting the shot miss him. Naruto quickly dashed in, only for Spiky to turn once again at him with his hands, Zenkana, he called out as he blasted Naruto at point-blank range. Acting upon extinction, Naruto crossed his arms to protect himself and felt a power wash over him. Once the sound wave died down, Spiky scoffed at the smoke in front of him, heh, like he said, a bunch of hacks, he then turned back to the group to finish them off. You should always check if your opponents are dead, Nimrod, Naruto said from behind him and kicked him away. Zaku was launched and his body was imprinted into a tree, but then fell off. Naruto took a breather and looked at himself. He didn't know how, but somehow he had just gotten on a whole form-fitting bodysuit of armor colored in white and red, who are you? He heard from his sight and saw that it was Shikamaru speaking to him while still holding on to Ino. Hey Shikamaru, it's me, Naruto, he replied with a happy grin. He saw that everyone was shocked at that. I mean, how is it so shocking to see someone who looks the same, only taller and more muscular? Naruto, is that really you? He heard Sakura ask and saw that she was nearly crying her eyes out. He started to get uncomfortable at that, he never saw Sakura act like this, and it kind of scared him. Yeah, he said with his usual stupid grin, I'm still alive and kicking. Well you won't be for long, said Spiky, who we know is Zaku, as he appeared right behind him with a kunai in his hand, now die, he said as thrust the kunai towards the back of his neck. They were about to yell out for him to duck, but were cut off as a roar sounded with a white tiger jumping over the bushes and pounced the sound nin before he could connect with his attack. Good job, White Blaze, Naruto said as he gave Nod and Foxy grin to the tiger as White Blaze chomped down on the nin's right arm and his right claw clamping down on the nin's left arm. Everyone was wide-eyed now, how did Naruto get a tiger to be on his side? Just as he was about to go over to his teammates, he heard the whistle of projectiles being thrown. He ducked as shurikens barely went over his head. He turned and saw the mummy nin, Dos, the charging right at him with his weird gauntlet cocked back for an attack. Just as he was about to attack Naruto, the blonde blocked it before it came down on his face. Heh, too easy, Naruto said, but then felt his vision getting dizzy as blood dripped down his left ear. Oh, is it now? Dosu mocked as he flicked the gauntlet. 
Naruto then heard a very high-pitched tone, and his vision getting more blurry. Now call off your tiger, or I'll kill you here and now, he said as he got another kunai in his free hand. Naruto was about to do something, but stopped as he felt his body go numb damn it. I can't move my body. I need something now, he said his vision started to get darker. Call upon the power of the armor of wildfire. It's your best bet now, young man said a familiar soft voice. Naruto's darkened vision then saw the monk women from before. Hair in each hand he recognized what do you mean to call upon its power, I thought I was, already using it. He said as his vision got darker and saw the sound nin coming closer for the kill. Thus do the procedures as the vision I give you she answered, Naruto then got the vision of how to call upon the armor's power, and felt his energy return to him, as he punched an in hard in the face, and made Dosu skid back a few feet. Naruto saw a bit of blood seep through the bandages, and knew he made his mouth bleed now, go and show your power to those who deserve it young man. Naruto had his eyes closed and gathered upon the energy from before. Shikamaru felt the accumulation of great chakra and knew something powerful was coming, Ino, get your soul back in your body now, he called out to the still-possessed sound nin girl. The girl looked up from her spot and nodded as she released her prisoner. Naruto eyes then opened as he raised his right arm high with left arm gathering up the chakra needed for this, armor of wildfire, doujin, he called out his raised right arm came down, and a glowing red orb bursting with power was held by his left arm. He then called his armor at that moment. Tapestry clothes covered the area around him and rose to the air. Once it got high enough, they burst into Sakura petals. As they fell, they shone Naruto in a sort of spotlight in his new armor. Red samurai-like armor was added to the armor he already had. The shoulder pad stuck out with blue markings. Fins coming out the forearms and adding armor to the boots he had on before. The body area has more red armor, with the sides being partly blue. On the back of that body armor were two black colored sheathed swords with blue hilts and yellow hand guards. He then held out his hand and let some of the Sakura petals fall and gathered into it as he raised the hand up over his head. They then transformed into a red helmet with bladed horns and mask. As he put it on, the mask split down the middle and slid to the sides to show his face. Everyone stared wide-eyed at the transformation, even the silent spectators, Niji and Tenten, who had arrived to save their teammate, were amazed but stopped to see what Naruto did. Naruto then gripped the two swords on his back and pulled them out and held them at his sides. Come on, I'll take you on, Naruto said as he gripped his swords. Osu shook his head and charged in. You think some pieces of armor are going to help you? He called out as he punched forward with a melody arm, only for him to get it sliced off by Naruto's left sword. Just as he was about to yell out in pain, he was kicked in the gut and sent launching towards a tree. Stay down, I don't want to have to kill you, Naruto said as he looked down at Osu. He then heard a chuckle from the mummy nin. You know, I never imagined to face one of the nine mystical armors, Dosu said as Naruto went wide-eyed, I bet my associates would love to hear this, his right stubbed arm, then emitted green smoke and was, replaced with a green armored hand, Madara-sama would love to hear this, another poof of smoke, and a hand held scythe with a chain was, in his green armored hand. Dosu then charged in while twirling the ballad chain that was, attached to the hand held scythe. It's a Kusurigama. Naruto dodged the throne chain and blocked the overhead strike with his sword. You don't know when to give up to you, Naruto said he pushed Osu off and slashed at his chest, only for the chain to block his attack. He was then punched in the face, which made him stagger back a bit. I'm not done with you yet, Dosu said as he threw the ballad chain and wrapped it around Naruto's neck. He then threw the blonde over his head and made him implant a tree. Naruto cried out in pain, but landed on his feet. Naruto then shook his head and recapped his situation okay, I'm powered up a bit, and so is this guy, but not as much. Everyone else is out of energy or knocked out, and White Blaze is making sure Spiky stays down he tried to think of a way to get rid of this guy, but couldn't think of anything. He was cut off as he barely ducked under the side that was thrown at him. Naruto quickly dashed off toward the Kusurigama wielder. Dosu threw the side, hoping to decapitate the Red Ronin warrior. Naruto ducked right under and blocked the ball chained end with his sword. The chain wrapped around his right sword, but Naruto quickly slid it off with his left sword, sparks gliding along the blade's reverse side. But that momentum, he spun around and aimed with both swords towards his midsection. But his attack was blocked by the scythe part of the weapon. They both struggled to overpower each other before they back off by jumping away from each other. You don't have time to think about Ronin Warrior, Dosu said as he looked a little bit sadistic, or maybe, I should just go for you friends, he suggested slowly as he looked toward the group that was watching. The mummy nin then charged at them. Naruto, acting on instinct, just appeared in between them and kicked him away. He then attached both of his swords together, making them into a single double-ended katana, you will not harm my friends, he said with determination. The girl of the sound team had been watching the whole thing with wide eyes. 
Her family had old scrolls on the very armor she was, seeing now, in fact, she was, sure that one of her family's ancestors was, one of the warriors herself the armor of wildfire, I can't believe I'm seeing this she thought numbly. She then saw him jump in the air and spin the blades as they burst with power. She then went wide-eyed and called out to everyone, run, he's about to destroy the area around him, she remembered one of the scrolls showing this, and knew what was, about to happen. Everyone looked at her and saw her run past them. White Blaze jumped off the Zaku, who cradled his arms in pain and stayed there, the tiger then shot off out of the area, along with everyone else with Sasuke slung over Chouji's shoulder. Up in the air, Naruto looked down at Dosu with pure determination, the determination to defeat this guy, you're finished, flare up now, he then slashed the blades forward and let loose a blinding blast toward Dosu and an unexpected Zaku. The two could only cry out in pain as their bodies were burned to ashes by attack. From the edge of lighting country, a blonde-haired girl around 14 years of age with green slitted eyes, looks in the direction of Konoha that power, it's that same as my armor she thought as she turned from her journey towards Konoha. Not too far from the tower in the forest of death, Gara looks towards the direction of Naruto, and the group with a hungry look in his eyes such power, he thought greedily whoever has that power, I will bathe in their blade and prove my existence he thought as he continued ahead, with his siblings scared out their minds for themselves, and feeling pity for whoever made Gara's hit list. From somewhere hidden in Konoha, three powerful sound nins look up towards the direction of the forest of death, wondering why they were feeling something similar to their power. Naruto then landed on the ground and could only look at the area with wide eyes. He dropped his swords and looked at his hands I I killed them he thought numbly and looked back at the destruction he caused. The ground in front of him was charred and carved out by the blast, with the big trees broken or bent out of the way, while leaving no evidence of the two sound nin's bodies. His attention was broken as he felt his hand being brushed against something. He looked down and saw that it was his tiger friend nuzzling its nose against his hand, trying to get him out of his depressed state. Naruto got out of his shock and petted the tiger in thanks for trying to cheer him up while softening his eyes. He then heard the snap of Twig and looked to see Team Ten, Lee and his teammates, and Sakura, who looked worriedly at both him and Sasuke, who was, slung over Chouji's shoulder. What surprised him was, the sound girl was there as well, who seemed to stay quiet. She also gave off a feeling of familiarity to Naruto, like he felt a familiar type of power around her. Hey, guys, Naruto said in a tired voice. He then looked at the sound girl and pointed to her, what's she doing with you guys? He voiced his thoughts to them. They turned their heads toward the sound and were about to go for their weapons when she held up her hands in surrender. I give, I know when to quit, besides, I'm not going up against anyone who has the armor of wildfire, she said as she threw her weapons pouch on the ground in front of them. Armor of wildfire? Shikamaru asked as he looked back at Naruto with narrowed eyes. He then sighed and muttered, this is just too troublesome, while Chaoji set Sasuke down and leaned him up against a tree. How do you know about my armor? Naruto asked as he and his tiger made their way to the group. Everyone backed up a bit from the tiger, not sure if they should trust the tiger, even if Naruto was friendly with it. As Naruto stopped in front of them, he thought he saw a flash of a blue kanji around the sound girl's forehead. Gin hesitated to answer, but slumped her shoulder and sighed, she knew she was their prisoner now. Not only that, but her teammates were dead, and so was she, if she went back to Orochimaru with the knowledge that they failed their mission, I know about it because of some historical scrolls my family used to have on it. One my family's ancestors was, one of the five that wielded one of the five Ronin armors, I think his name is Sai Maori, he called himself Sai of the Torrent, she explained as she fiddled a bit with the end of her very long hair that was, tied by a purple tie on that very end. Naruto was, surprised at that, and wondered if she was, a container like him, but he felt no demonic chakra coming from her, not like he felt with Gara. But for some reason, he felt that she still held a similar power to his, maybe it was, the power of the Ronin armor, if her connection to one of the five Ronin warriors was, any indication. Ronin armors, what are those, asked the bun-haired girl. Naruto noted that she seemed familiar and remembered her name was, Tenten, one of his past classmates. Naruto saw the look of ignorance on Kin's face and opted to answer, the five Ronin armors are mythical armors with great power, there are also four other armors, called the Warlord armors. The five Ronin armors are named Wildfire, Halo, Hard Rock, Strata, he then looked at Kin and said and Torrent, he then looked back at the group to continue, the four Warlord armors are named Poison, Corruption, Illusion, and Cruelty. Each armor is powerful in their own right. As you can see I wield the armor of wildfire, he then saw they were about to ask something else, but interrupted, if you want to know what the other armors do, I'll tell you one thing, I don't know. I know as much as you guys do now, he lied as he didn't want them to get suspicious of him. Niji narrowed his eyes at the blonde and noted that his body language and facial expressions said otherwise about him being ignorant. Niji always prided himself at being able to read people's body language and facial reactions, to read what they were thinking and know what they were up to. 
But he quietly snorted, not caring about it one bit. So what if Adobe had powerful armor, he would lose to him all the same, fate demanded that he would lose to him, of that he was, sure of. Any other asked questions were interrupted when they felt a massive rise of chakra that felt very wrong. They all turned to see Sasuke in a pillar of purple chakra that swirled around him as marks that moved around his body and face like flames, which then settled into showing black flame marks on him. He then looked at his hands and started to giggle like a deranged man. He then cast his eyes onto Sakura, who still looked beat up, Sakura, who did this to you? He asked in a hoarse tone. Sasuke-kun, what's wrong? Sakura asked as she looked worriedly at a crush. Everyone started to tense when he giggled as he flexed his power of evil like chakra. Just as he was about to rant about his power, he heard a voice that cut through his psyche, a voice he didn't think he'd hear so soon after recent events. Oi, team, what the hell? He heard ahead of him. He snapped his eyes open at the red armored man, who took off his helmet to show the blonde spiked hair of his teammate, Naruto. He looks at him with wide eyes. With his stunned state, the curse seal slowly retreats back to its former sealed state. Oi, why are you looking at me like that? Naruto asked with an irritated look. All Naruto got was, Sasu closing his eyes and falling down to the floor, unconscious once again. Naruto's eyebrow just twitched for a bit with irritation, before he sighed and walked over to sling over the Ichiha's arms over his shoulders. Just as he was, about to lift him up, his armor glows bright red before it disperses into Sakura petals, while all the petals themselves disappear into nothingness, leaving him with his previous clothes. Naruto just shrugged before he looked back at everyone, me and Sakura-chan got things here, why don't you guys go on ahead, he suggested to them. They all looked at each other before nodding. Well, it was troublesome to be here, but I hope to see you guys later, Shikamaru said as he started to walk away in his lazy gait. Stay safe guys, Chaoji said as he chomped down on his chips, following close by Shikamaru while doing so. You better make it billboard brow, because I still need to beat you to be with Sasu-kun, Ino said cheerfully, and ran up to catch up to her teammates, ignoring the burning gaze Sakura was giving her. HN, Niji said as he started to walk in the other direction. See you guys, Tenten said cheerfully, happy that at least her past classmate was safe. She then walked next to Niji. Naruto-kun, next time we meet, I hope to show you my flames of youth and see which one of our fires are better, Lee said with his eyes burning with passion, giddy with finding such a worthy opponent once again. He was instantly alongside his teammates. Everyone then vanished with their teammates, leaving Team 7 to themselves. Naruto sighed as he kept Sasuke's arm over his shoulders. He looked back to Sakura, only to see her slightly stepping away from his tiger friend, don't worry Sakura-chan, Naruto began as he got her attention, white blaze ain't going to hurt you, I guarantee it, he then looked at the white tiger, isn't right buddy? He asked with a grin on. He got a roar as an answer, which made Sakura leap right behind him, are you sure, Naruto? She asked fearfully as the tiger was, now right beside Naruto. The blonde rolled his eyes at her and pushed her in front of him with his free arm, go on and try and pet him, you'll see you have nothing to worry, she looks back at him as he gave an encouraging look in his eyes, go on, pet him, he goaded her. She gulped as she looked back at the tiger, who was, just staring at her with curious eyes. Slowly, ever so slowly, did she reach out to touch its forehead. She hesitated before she touched the black striped animal. With careful care, she touched its forehead and held it there, to make sure it wasn't just toying with her. Seeing it doing nothing, she started to pet the white tiger. When it moved, she jolted her hand back and was about to run back to Naruto, but stopped when she felt it lick her face. She giggled a bit as it continued to lick her a bit. Naruto chuckled at the scene, but then remembered the surviving sound Kanoichi. He looked back to see her leaning back against the tree with a look of resignation. With a silent sigh, he looked back to her and called to her, Oi, he didn't know her name, but it at least still got her attention as she looked up to him, Come on, we need to get out of here, he said to her. He then started to walk off where he remembered where he passed a river on his way here. Then looked up at him with surprised eyes. But, you'll die if you stay in this forest by yourself, and I don't feel like having your death on my shoulders, just because I refuse to help you when you're at your weakest. He cut her off as he continued on with White Blaze and Sakura, who was, looking back and forth between the two with unsure look on her face, not sure if it was, a good idea to have the sound Kinoichi with them. Inside as she knew he was, right as she picked her equipment back up, she needed to survive now. But what was the point of staying alive when both of your teammates are dead and failed someone like Orochimaru, not much of life if you must know. Nonetheless, she felt she needed to listen to the blonde. It was just something deep in her that told her to listen to the guy, as if what he said would help her live. Shaking her head, she got up and quickly jogged up to them, wanting to see what her future held with this guy who held a powerful armor that was said to be of legends. When she thought that, she felt like, even if it was just a very small chance, that she'll live no matter what. 